Hey everyone, it's Tim again. And today I got to do this video on whether or not the housing market crisis that's happening over in China is going to spill over to our market and cause a crash here. So um, anyway, let's just get right on into it, guys. All right, so today I thought I'd do this video because my team and I had a conversation this morning in our daily team meeting about the Evergrande crisis and the crisis that's going on in the mortgage market over in China and in China's real estate market. And they figured, well, Tim, will it spill over to the US? Well, this is definitely something we need to be concerned with. Some of the people that are on my team lived through the 2008 crisis, meaning they had homes, they saw the home's values going down 50, 30, 40, 50%. It was really crazy time here in Arizona. So I'm gonna talk about whether or not the crisis in China is gonna affect American households. But we're also gonna discuss what happened back in the, the US and how is that different from what's happening in China right now, or if there are any differences. All right, so let's just get right into it. So um, first of all, when it comes down to the financial markets, their financial system is 100% different from ours. Now, while they have a central bank, the biggest difference is that they have nationalized their banking system, which means that the banks are not privately owned. The banks are owned by the states. Okay, so China is a little bit different as far as the banking, but what exactly happened to the US back in that 2008 crisis? Well, let me show you. I'm kind of a visual person, so I've got to show you on my little whiteboard here. All right, so the way that our financial system works is that in order to issue bonds, in order for us to make mortgages, Fannie and Freddie have to issue these bonds on the secondary market called mortgage-backed securities, okay, or MBS. All right, so this is kind of what happened back in 2005, 2006. They had mortgage-backed securities, but the problem is how often do people pay their mortgage? Right, every single month. So what they did was they came up with another bond called C. D-O or CMO, depending on who you talk to. And what that stand for was collateralized debt obligation or collateralized mortgage obligation, okay? And so what, what that basically was, was a mortgage-backed security that was packaged into a bond. The bond would then pay the investors the bond would then pay the investors um, their yield or part of the profit for investing into that bond, right? And that bond would pay out twice a year, two times a year. So that's why the investors on Wall Street liked it. Also, the mortgage-backed securities come with a high risk of prepayment, which bond investors also don't like. So it solved that problem as well. So you have these CDOs and CMOs and everything seemed okay. I think those mortgage-backed securities and CDO market was made back in like 1970s or something. So this has been a pretty old system. Now in 2006, what was unique was people really started betting on this. So on top of having the CMO or the CDO, they came up with something called CDO squared. Okay. So what exactly exactly is happening here? Well. You have a borrower and the borrower is making their monthly payment, right? Monthly into this mortgage-backed security and this mortgage-backed security then pays out to the bond and the bond then pays out to the investors. But then you have another bond that's basically a derivative of a CDO, meaning that the value is derived from the value of the other investment that it's based on. And that one has, it's a derivative of the mortgage-backed security. Okay, do you see where this is going? So what happens is if the borrower stops making payments, it's like a domino, boom, the mortgage-backed security fails. And if all the mortgage-backed security fails, then well, the CDO would fail as well. And if the CDO failed, well, the CDO squared would fail. Now it didn't stop there. 
On top of making the synthetic CDO or the CDO squared, they also went out and they did this. They made a CDO cubed, okay? They made it a bet on the bet of a bet that somebody's gonna pay their mortgage. Uh, then what happened is sometime in 2006, somebody spotted this, that this, this, this system was kind of failing. So they realized that the, the, the insurers of all these bonds, which is basically AIG and Lehman Brothers, right? They knew that the insurers of all these bonds were not gonna be able to make good if the borrower stopped paying. Sure enough, this, somebody comes out and says, hey, we need to make a credit default swap. Okay, credit default swap is gonna be the insurance on this in case all of this stuff comes crashing down. But what happens if AIG and Lehman Brothers, they don't have enough to cover their credit default swaps that they bet on. And so overnight, their liquidity completely dries up. This, these are called derivatives in our market. Okay, let me show you something else. The derivatives are called derivatives because they derive their value from another investment. So. The derivatives market got all the way up in 2005 and 2006 to 1.2 quadrillion. Quadrillion, oh my God, with a Q. This is absolutely insane if you ask me. This is bigger than the American real estate market. This is bigger than the American stock market. This is bigger than any market in the entire world has ever seen. Now. Today's market, we currently have a derivatives market somewhere in the neighborhood of 70 trillion. Okay, that's much more manageable than the 1.2 quadrillion. You can see how quickly when somebody within a bond doesn't make their payment or doesn't perform on their debt obligations, then everybody else down the line is effect affected, right? Okay, so. We had the huge blow up. Everybody knows what happens. You know, will this impact you? In other words, does China have the same system that America has? Yes and no. No, when it comes to all the CDOs, CDO cubes, CDO squared. They do sell residential, RMBS, or residential mortgage backed securities. Okay, but the big difference is in China, whenever someone takes out a mortgage, they have to pay for the mortgage while the builder is building the home. So they're putting a big down payment, and I think 30, 40% would be pretty normal. They're putting a, a big down payment. Usually a lot of their life savings are going into that 30 or 40% down. And on top of that, they're making their mortgage debt obligation payments while the construction is going on. So it's a completely different market than ours. But here's what's crazy. In October, we believe that they're not going to make any, no, none of the borrowers want to make their payments anymore. And they're threatening to boycott the mortgage if the projects aren't finished. Now, looking at Evergrande's ability to fix these problems doesn't look so good in the immediate future. But I do believe the Chinese government will probably try to step in and fix the problem. However, we also know that whenever we have a housing problem in the country, it can be a real serious, real long, drawn out, process that takes years and years to heal from. Okay. So with that being said, I looked into the, our derivatives market and we don't, I don't think that the American market is tied in enough that this market will crash our market. In fact, I couldn't find any links between our housing market and China's housing market, except from the great financial crisis. When you look at um, what we did was we basically exported our housing crisis back then, right? Like they have a saying, when America sneezes, the world catches cold. Well, now you can see why. In America, we figured out how to take $1 and turn it into a billion, right? I mean, it's, it's nuts. So anyway, guys, that's kind of how, how everything went down back then. And, um, and, and is that gonna happen again? No, there's some regulations in place about having assets on hand and different things that went into place after the great financial crisis. In China's banking system, the, the Bank of China, it's state-owned, it's a nationalized banking system. Again, completely different from our system. 
and it doesn't really tie in too bad. They, though you can see while they're selling these mortgage-backed securities on the open market, when the mortgage, when the when the borrowers start to fail, the next one in line is not going to be the bondholder; it's going to be the builder. And why is that? Because they're using these monthly payments and the down payment from the borrowers in order to fund the project, which now they're out of money. So anyway, I hope this helps, guys. I don't think any of the two are tied together. I could be wrong, you know. I'm not a financial planner, but uh, that's my opinion. Anyways, I hope that you like this information. All right, take care, folks. And if you did like, consider subscribing, hitting that little notification bell, and, uh, and I think the little like button for the YouTube algorithm. All right, folks, we'll see you in the next one.